provided that dominion becomes a tool for the revelation of Jesus dominion like every other thing is useless like salt would lose its sever if it does not translate to the revelation of God and now for us the believers the revelation of Jesus Christ why because Jesus Christ has come as the embodiment of God is that true the Bible says he's the express image of the invisible God so let's discuss a few things and then we'll have some time to pray believers according to scripture let me just go straight to the point according to scripture the Bible reveals that believers have a twofold mandate please write it down all believers irrespective of what you do irrespective of where you come from irrespective of your your pedigree your you know qualification and status all believers have a twofold mandate as far as the kingdom life is concerned and let me run through them very quickly number one the first mandate that every believer has is to establish the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men the first mandate that every believer in christ has is to establish the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men this has nothing to do with being a preacher this has nothing to do with being a man or a woman of god it has nothing to do with evangelism it is a mandate upon all men are we together the first mandate given to all men in the kingdom in order of priority is to establish the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men hallelujah this entire project is captured in what we call the gospel of salvation please write the gospel of salvation theologically speaking there are seven dimensions of the gospel but primarily the one that is responsible for saving men is called the gospel of salvation the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the father's love please listen carefully a revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ man and creation being the object the object of that love are we together that when we believe in jesus we receive the life of god this is the gospel of salvation a revelation of the father's love expressed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus man and then the entire creation being the object of that love hallelujah and the bible says by believing that message by believing that report you become a bona fide recipient of the life of god we call it so way it is more than eternal life in truth everybody has eternal life because eternal life means life without end nobody ceases to live the life he gave us is a quality of life not just the longevity of life are we together what jesus gave us is more than eternal life it is the very very life of god that he gave us and apostle john was mentoring the church and he said this is the record that god had given us eternal life he said but this life was so structured that until you encounter the son so please believers listen i'm just trying to summarize because of time the first dimension of the mandate given to every believer for your christian experience to be purposeful for you to really understand the value of dominion you have to understand this first dimension that it is the desire of god that all men be saved are we together now and so your pursuit for dominion and every other thing in between is useless until you understand this twofold mandate number one the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men 
so god is first concerned about the hearts of men before systems and structures please you need to understand this in order of spiritual priority the hearts of men carry more value than systems and structures if you focus on developing the sociology you focus on developing physical structures and you allow the hearts of men to be depraved you are not um, prioritizing the program of God the hearts of men the hearts of men let's look at a few scriptures if God is blessing you say amen the hearts of men Romans chapter 1 and verse 16 let me run through a few scriptures Romans 1 16 please Romans 1 16 Apostle Paul again is teaching the church in Rome and he says for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ he calls it the power of God unto salvation for everyone please say everyone one more time say everyone everyone includes Europe everyone includes America everyone includes Africa Lagos every village I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ he says for it is not it has it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes to everyone that believes the gospel is the power of God to everyone that believes in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15 Mark 16 15 please Mark 16 15 Jesus Christ according to Mark's synoptic account said unto them go ye into all the world he says preach the gospel to every creature it's amazing he did not say preach the gospel to men alone he says preach the gospel to every creature that means there is a way to evangelize to nature there is a way to evangelize to the ecosystem evangelism is not limited to speaking to men you can command salvation over territories jesus gave us a mandate he says preach the gospel to every creature third scripture romans chapter 10 please beginning from verse 8 now i like this one romans 10 and verse 8 it says but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in your mouth and your heart that is the word of faith which we preach we're reading to 15 very quickly verse 9 verse 8 down to 15 so we'll go to verse 9 now no don't jump to 15 just 8 9 10 11 12 that's what I meant that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus now this is the spiritual protocol if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead he says thou shalt be saved verse 10 for with the heart man believes unto righteousness are we together it says and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation now pay attention from verse 11 for the scripture says whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed now verse 12 there is no difference between the jew and the greek the same lord is rich unto all that call upon him 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved 14 now it says how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed so the major problem is that they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard it takes hearing to believe and how shall they hear without a preacher so the preacher provides the hearing of faith and the hearing of faith gives room for believing and that when you believe then the life of God is administered to you and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things can I tell you sincerely the reason I submit to you that the reason why 
our idea of evangelism as much as we have programs and conferences soul winning is for many people an epileptic christian experience that just comes when opportunities provide there are many reasons among them is because we have not been living testaments of that message and that life ourselves because the way god structured impact is that when anything blesses you you automatically lose the ability to keep quiet there were times that jesus blessed people and told them to keep quiet they were too grateful to keep quiet so your silence and your inertia as far as reaching out is more than a demonic issue it is because we are so used to a failed christian experience are we together that our christian experience has become a plethora a, a repetition of failure to a point that we've just camped around the religiosity but we love people too much to bring them into this hour whatever it is that does not work so we would rather talk to them about something else but not jesus but i'm praying for you in the name of jesus that your christian experience will be so rich that everything about your experience your life your testimonies will be compelling and it will bring men to jesus on a daily basis in the name of jesus christ the bible talks about the madman in gadara this was a man who was mad locked up by demon spirits in caves when he had an encounter with jesus ten cities ten cities he went to the decapolis and announced and published the good things the same thing happened to the woman at the well she was not asked jesus did not say go and tell the people the bible says she left her priorities changed immediately she left whatever it is there and she ran this was the same woman who was probably ashamed and afraid because of her state being a harlot she said i don't care what you think about me i have been so transformed i cannot keep quiet come see a man i don't know his name but i can tell you what he did come see a man that told me everything that i have done the first mandate of every believer is not to build a house the first mandate is not to have children the first mandate is not even to be a preacher the first mandate is not to be a businessman please listen carefully believers need a new superior spiritual reorientation to understand the priorities of God you see let me tell you the reason why it looks like God has so lavishly invested upon others and has seemed to leave others it's not because there are any prejudices or biases with god it is because others have plunged more accurately into the heart of his program hallelujah yes. in order of priority establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men whoever participates actively in making that happen i can tell you that person number one is at the epicenter of the will of god you know we live in a world today where everyone is asking what am i here for i mean what is my purpose there is a general corporate purpose for everyone before we go into all of the the geography of our witness no matter what it is that you know or do not know about your life you are not truly working in kingdom purpose if your life is not helping to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men are we together most of those we read of in the bible and in history who were lavishly empowered given so much access to the anointing of the spirit every single one of them it was because the theme the anthem of their entire life was to see jesus revealed in the hearts of people and so to empower them to be effective god did not spare in giving them access to the anointing when your heart and your desire is not to see men saved you you can give any kind of excuse you can say well i'm not really into this ministry thing for me i'm just there's, there's something about me and money we're coming to you but let me tell you you are already in error 
it does not matter what you are called to do the mandate to see the lordship of christ established in the hearts of men is not a mandate for evangelists it's not a mandate for preachers it's not a mandate for those who choose to go into ministry it is his desire that all men be saved i was doing a little statistics with my people back home and now you know that there are about eight billion people on earth statistic tells us as at of november and we only have about 2.6 billion professing christians not serious christians not christians that have been verified 2.6 billion please help me subtract 2.6 billion from 8 billion and yet we say jesus is coming soon and we call him king of kings and lord of lords and we say he's coming as a victorious one emmanuel god is we he does he shall reign he shall reign you know that song can i tell you if all we have done respectfully speaking our crusades our conferences our internet evangelism has only succeeded to bring about 2.5 billion people there has to be a strategy that is not human to cover this gap within the time we have because by the strength of the flesh based on these statistics there is trouble you go to europe respectfully speaking go to the west and see the unfortunate plunge in the christian faith are we together now i mean it is it is it is going down nose diving in a disturbing way and if we do not arise there will be a generation that will rise and corporately reject jesus not as individuals as a generation they will choose that we have examined the options and we have chosen that jesus is no longer relevant in our generation the mandate to establish the lordship of christ why am i telling you this because someone has been praying for spiritual power someone has been praying for wealth someone has been praying god give me a child and god says all these things you are asking is within my power to give you but i have not found any connection to my program in your desire so your desire remains an interruption until i can find how your prayer request connects to my program let me give you a secret to securing the hand of god let your request be limited to the will of god and the program of god and you have found the way of securing God's support eternally believe me believe me believe me Lord it is my desire to see souls saved it is my desire to see nations change it's my desire to see your light fall upon continents and this will require billions and you will see God shift systems and structures and give you money that if they ask you you say honestly I'll be lying if I can explain it this one was not end it was a trust I prayed and I told God that he should I should be you you, you are explaining the basis for this level of blessing let me tell you the truth many believers are not kingdom in their approach they are church in their approach they are religious in their approach but the truth about it is that behind our desires respectfully speaking even our praying and fasting if vetted from the lens of the will of God many of us are just doing our things using God so God is a tool to achieve a bigger picture that bigger picture being you so if you are told fasting can help you if you are told giving can help you make more money you now say God take it this is my bribe as per the discussion and God says this is not how I work but that God will find someone in this church tonight who says Lord I may not be able to do everything but here is my life that as far 
as adding to the number of them who call upon your name is concerned i am here and i am available you would have prayed a prayer that heaven will come out there i don't know everything about god i am a student in the knowledge of god but i can tell you one thing you secure the hand the heart and the trust of god when your heart becomes stayed not on church not on preaching not on business there is a place for those it's a twofold mandate most of the church has gotten the second part but we have ignored the first part you believe evangelists alone will be able to save the world no by what strategy did the news of the pandemic get to the whole world that there was a global lockdown global lockdown not lockdown that was national not lockdown that was continental that was a revelation that continents can be saved in one day if an announcement can go beyond barriers look beyond the tragedy and see the writings on the wall god is showing the possibilities that under a certain condition the same thing can happen across every nation under the influence of the pandemic it did not matter whether you were a nigerian it didn't matter whether you had a company a similar thing happened in the days of noah it didn't matter what else you were doing there was only one thing that was the subject matter during the pandemic your business did not matter during the pandemic your school did not matter during the pandemic nothing else mattered only the pandemic can we replace it with jesus this is what i believe this is more than being a preacher this is the program of god hallelujah please take it high for me whatever you want to do lord you can do through me whatever you want to say Lord, you can say through me, whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me, for I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Whatever you want to start, Lord, you can start through me. Whatever you want to end, Lord, you can end through me. Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change through me, cause I'm yours.